The force of the motor M on the cable is shown in the graph. So here is F, which is the force of the motor. Determine the velocity of the 400 kg crate A when T equals 2 seconds. And here is a hint for problems that have the force as a function of time. You need to find the time when this block starts to move or the initial velocity. This problem is concerned about time. Determine the velocity of the crate when t is equal to 2 seconds. But we don't know at what time, after applying the force, this block will start to move. So if you look at the free body diagram and think about what will happen, when t is equal to 0, the force is equal to 0, and the block is not moving. So we gradually increase the force until 2f becomes larger than the weight. And at this instant, the block will start to have its initial velocity. So all what we need to do now is to take the summation of forces in the y direction equals to zero, because we don't know at what time this system will start to move. So if we take the positive up, then it's 2f minus mg equals to zero. Or we can put it this way, 2f as a function of time is equal to 400 times 9.81. And if we solve for the time, we will get t equals 1.77 seconds. So if you substitute, for example, t equals 1 in this side, then this becomes 625 times 2, which is 1250. And the other side becomes around 3900. So the left side here is less than the right side, which means that the force is less than the weight and the system is not moving yet. And it stays this way until t becomes equal to 1.772 seconds. Just after this time, let's say 1.773 seconds, the left-hand side, which are the two forces, becomes larger than the weight. And this is when we have our initial velocity and the block starts to move up. And now that the system starts to move, we have our summation of forces equals to ma. Same equation, and the result is acceleration as a function of time, which makes sense. And to find the velocity after some time, we just need to use the acceleration definition, which is dv over dt. So we take dt to the other side, and we integrate both sides. And remember that all what we did in the last part was to find the initial conditions. So when v0 is equal to 0, the time is 1.772 seconds. In other words, the block will start to move, will have its initial velocity when the time is 1.77 seconds. And this is where most students make the mistake. They just put time equals to zero here and they get the wrong answer. If you do that, then you are assuming that this block has started to move from t equals to zero, which is wrong. We just proved that the block will start to have its initial velocity when the time is equal to 1.77. And by doing that, we do the integrations, we get v as a function of time, we apply the time limits, and we will get the velocity as 0.3 meters per second. Thank you.